Mr. McCoy here with today's edition of Literacy Corner. We're going to answer the burning question, what are stories made of? We get to delve into two interesting tales, the first of which is Keeping the Lost Dog Lost and King Midas and the Golden Touch. Here they come now. Up first, Keeping the Lost Dog Lost. As you listen and participate in this tale, think, how do the events in Chapter 3 build on what happened in Chapter 2? Here comes Keeping the Lost Dog Lost. Chapter 1, Finding a Lost Dog. Three weeks ago, I found a lost dog on my way home from school. Mom and I couldn't figure out whom he belonged to, so we called him Mystery. There was no mystery, though, about what happened next. I fell in love with the dog and started hoping that he could stay with us forever. Then one night, Mom sat down next to me and said, Jillian, what if we can't find Mystery's owner? Do you think you're ready to become a pet owner? I said, yes, 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 of course. But then a darker thought crept into my brain. What if I do find the owner? Chapter 2, Mystery's Real Name. The next day, I was taking Mystery for a walk when I spotted, tacked to a telephone pole, a poster with a picture of a lost dog on it. I thought, oh no, it can't be. But there was no question. It was Mystery. Or should I say, Barney, because that was what it seemed was his real name. Are you Barney? I asked, and he barked three times, wagging his tail happily. Then we walked all over the neighborhood, and I tore down ten more posters from ten more poles. I knew that what I was doing was selfish and wrong, but I couldn't bear to lose Barney. Chapter 3, Home at Last. After I took down all the posters I could find, though, my happiness vanished. I knew someone else loved Barney, and I even knew her name from the poster, Carol Green. It was wrong to keep a lost dog lost, and I realized what I had to do. That night, my mom said, Mystery sure seems happy in this new home. His name is Barney, Mom, I said. Barney, she said. Are you changing his name? Then I told her the truth. Mom was upset with me at first, but she knew I'd only behave that way because I loved Barney so much. Mom called the phone number on the poster, and we headed over to Carol Green's house. The minute we got out of the car, Mrs. Green burst out of the house crying, Barney! Mrs. Green told us how it happened that Barney got lost. She had been out of town and had put Barney in a kennel, but somehow he escaped. He couldn't find me, Mrs. Green said to me, but I guess he found you. Then Mrs. Green surprised us. She told us she had to move out of state for a new job and she wouldn't be able to take Barney with her. She announced, Jillian, do you think Barney could live with you? She was blinking back tears, but she was smiling. I think that would make everyone happy, Mom said. I grinned and then Barney barked and wagged his tail. Apparently, he agreed. So, how do the events in Chapter 3 build on what happened in Chapter 2? Share with your fellow listener. Up next, King Midas and the Golden Touch. As you participate in this tale, think about how the events in Chapter 2 build on the events that happen in Chapter 1. Chapter 1, The King's Wish. Long ago, there was a king named Midas. You might think that a king would have to be wise and thoughtful, but unfortunately, Midas was a foolish king. Although he was foolish, King Midas was not mean or unkind. He had a daughter whom he loved more than the moon and the stars, and Midas himself was much loved by some of the gods who ruled over the ancient world. In fact, one of the gods told Midas he would grant the king anything he wished for. Midas thought this over. If he had thought a little longer, he might have made a wiser choice, but besides being foolish, Midas was also a bit greedy. 
Surely it was greed that caused Midas to ask for the power to turn everything he touched to gold. Chapter 2, Midas's Golden Touch. Unfortunately for Midas, the god granted his wish. King Midas was overjoyed. He touched his chair and it turned to gold. He touched the walls of the room and they turned to gold. Then Midas went outside. Every plant, flower, and blade of grass he touched immediately became gold. He went to the, his orchard and pulled an apple from the tree. Midas's golden touch turned the fruit into a glittering ball of gold. Chapter three, too much of a good thing. Midas returned to his palace. He called out for food and drink, for all this gold making had made him hungry. His servants brought plates of food to his table, but every bit of food that Midas touched turned to gold before he could taste it. Even the water in his glass turned to a flowing stream of gold as soon as it touched his lips. Midas was beginning to have some doubts about his wondrous new power. Just then, his beloved daughter came running into the room. Chapter 4, Wishing the Greed Away Father, Father, the young girl cried, something terrible has happened in the garden. The soft green grass has turned hard and sharp and the flowers. Father, look at the flowers. She held out two blooms, once living, they were now cold and hard and golden. Midas reached out to comfort his crying child. As soon as his hand touched her, the girl became a statue of gold, a golden tear frozen on her golden cheek. What have I done? cried Midas. He begged the god who had given him this gift to take it away. The god took pity on Midas. He told the king to go to the nearby river to have his greed washed away. Once he did so, all that the foolish king had once made gold returned to what it had been, and his daughter came running to his arms. Back to the original question, how did the events in chapter 2 build on what happened in chapter 1? Share with your fellow listener. This marks the end of today's edition of Literacy Corner. Another is coming on Monday. It too will be a golden opportunity to learn reading skills.